Hi and welcome to Toby's Developer Corner. Today I want to show you how you can make two Docker containers talk to each other. Before we get into the demo, let's talk about how Docker containers typically would communicate with, with each other. And um, one way that people will uh, make two Docker containers talk to each other um, is by simply having a shared directory on the host or some sort of shared uh, folder somewhere that both of these containers can access. And then container one would post files or logs, for example, into that directory. And container two can pick them up or container two can post something to it and so forth. So in this case, um, it would be communication through a shared file on the host. The example that I will be showing you is um, communication of Docker containers using the network, meaning we will be using the Docker network and um, there's no shared directory needed. We will just run a container and a second container and we will be able to communicate from container two with container one and retrieve information. I have switched over to the terminal of my Ubuntu 21.04 instance running on VirtualBox um, and I have created a directory. I created mine simply under documents, TDC demos, Docker communicate and then I've created a folder container one. Um, so what do we have in this folder? I have in this folder an application file for a Python Flask RESTful application and a docker file and um, we can take a look at these files um, just to demonstrate what i have in here okay so let's take a look at the docker file first um, our docker file is to build our container one and um, i'm building it from the base of alpine i'm using latest i'm running an apk update i'm installing python 3 and py3 pip I am installing with pip3, flask, and flask restful. Then I'm creating a directory and I am copying my application file, my app.py. I'm copying that into the application directory. And then I am starting my container by simply executing uh, this application file um, and run my flask server. So let's take a look at the app.py file. Uh, I'm importing Flask from Flask. I'm importing Flask RESTful. I need resource and API. I'm creating my application. I'm creating my API. I am then creating my send message class. And I'm simply returning when a GET is received. I'm simply returning message from container one. I am adding my API. Uh, the resource to the API. My route is simply on the root and then I'm running uh, my application. Uh, one thing that is important when you're taking this approach um, is to bind 0000, 0, 0, 0 to the network so that you can address your uh, Docker container um, by the container IP address or by the container name. Um, uh, we will get into that in a little bit and I will show more in detail what exactly that means. Just note for now that you need to bind to 0 .0 .0 .0. Uh, Flask by default will run on port 5000. I will not change that and I will leave that as it is. With that being uh, said and uh, talked about, let's switch back to our terminal and let's go ahead and build our Docker container. So we just do a Docker build. Um, we are in the directory where the Docker file is, so we just need to add our dot and we want to tag this container as container one. I would just make that version one dot zip up oh, that didn't work. Let me try that again. One dot zero dot zero. Okay. So let's go ahead and build our Docker container. 
once it has completed needs to install all the dependencies do another pip installs and our container has been built successfully and also tagged successfully so we can take a look just type in a docker images there is my container one and that looks really good so we have our first container that will be sending the message um, that we then want to read um, we have that build and now let's get into starting it here I have cleared my screen so now let's start the docker container to do that we do a docker run we'll run it in detached mode we will tell it to remove the container once the um, container is being stopped so I don't need to clean that up we want to give it a name we call it container1 and then we want to tell it what container to run and let's fire this up let's make sure that our container is running and there it is it's up and running and we can continue now let's see that we get the IP address for this container that is running to get that we can simply run a docker inspect grab IP no that was wrong inspect so this is another example here uh, docker inspect I can give it either the container ID or I can give it the name it's easier to give it the name because I don't need to copy this I can just simply type it out or copy it and remember it if I need to run it without pulling my currently running containers first so uh, giving names to your containers is definitely a good idea so here we do container one and now we pipe to grab and we want to get our IP address let's run this and this is now the IP address that you see here this is the IP address this container is running on now that we have the IP address we can go ahead and demonstrate the communication between the containers uh, to do that I will simply run another Alpine container I'll just do a docker run we'll run this in interactive mode and we'll just do an alpine latest now let's fire that up should end up on the command line here I am and now we simply will run a wget dash q dash o dash and now we'll just enter the IP address my bad Let's try that again. 172.17.0.2. And as I've mentioned before, Flask by default runs on port 5000. So let's add port 5000 and everything works well. I should get the message back. And there is my message from container 1. Perfect this worked beautifully so we have started our container running a rest api we have started a second container and using the docker network we have been able to communicate from one to another all this talking about docker networks let's take a look if i'm exiting out i am back on my host machine where docker is running let's see what kind of networks do, do do we actually have here so we can run a command it's called uh, or it's just a docker network list and these are the networks that we can use um, using docker by default when you start a docker container it automatically will join the bridge network this is by default now this bears the problem that if you want to work with container communication over the network and you always leave it at default eventually all containers will be able to communicate with each other so let's take a look at how we can create our own network and join our two containers that we've just used onto our own network 
Let's first go ahead and stop our container that's running in detached mode. You can check again that it's still running. And there it is. And all I do here is run a docker stop container one. No, con container one. And now the container is stopped. We can check. And there is currently no containers running. So now we can go ahead and start from scratch. First, let's create our own network. And the way that you do that is simply by running docker network create and give it a name. And I will just call it my dash network. Let's run that. And now we can check docker network list. And there we go. We have our own network created. It's by default using the bridge network, and that's fine. But we now have a separate network that will not be used by default when starting a Docker container. And it allows us to keep things separate and only join Docker containers to this network that we want to be able to talk to each other. So let me go ahead and clear my screen. And now let's start our Docker container again, container one, and make sure that it is actually on our now created network. So we do a Docker run in detached mode. We want to remove it automatically. We give it the name container, no, container one. And then what we need to do is dash dash net and I will put in here my network and then we give it the image name that we want to run. Let's fire that up. Great. So let's see if we still can get our um, IP address. Docker inspect container one pipe two grab IP address and there is our IP address. You may now notice this has actually changed, but nonetheless, this is the IP address of our container that we will need. Let's go ahead and start our Alpine container on the same network and see that we can go ahead and communicate with each other. So we do a Docker run. Uh, we want to run it in interactive mode. We want to join it to my network. And we will run a Alpine latest. Here I am. Now I do a wget-q-o-172.18.1. Port 5000. So let's see if this will now work too. And here's my message from my other container. Now, to demonstrate that this is because I am on the same network, let's go ahead and get out of this container. And let's run this again and join to the default network, which is the default Docker bridge. And if I run now a wget dash q dash o dash one seventy two eighteen dot zero dot two port five thousand, I should get an error or it should get hung up or something. Nothing should happen, um, which it doesn't. I will not sit here and wait until it times out. So I just cancel out of it. But now you see that this Docker container actually joined to the default network and we are not able to communicate. If you're not sure what network a container is running on, there is a way that you can um, see that as well when you do a Docker inspect. So to show you this, I will leave um, my Alpine container right now on the bridge network, on the default network running. And I will open a second tab in my terminal. And uh, let's first see 
what containers we are running. We have our Alpine latest and we have our container one. And now let's do a Docker inspect and we'll take the container ID over here for our Alpine image, which is on the bridge network. Didn't take it. Let's try that again. Okay, and now we'll just do a pipe to grab network mode. If you take a look, it's the default, meaning it's on the bridge network, the default network. If we do the same thing for our container one, and here I can use the name because I named my container. And a pipe to grab, you will see it's my network. So here you can see when you, for example, have two Docker containers and you want to communicate between the two and that doesn't work, uh, you may want to check maybe what networks they are on and change that if uh, they're different. Okay, and now let's clean up. Let me go ahead and close my second tab, exit out of uh, the Alpine container that we have here, run a docker stop container one, and we want to get rid of that, and then we can go ahead if you want to. Um, we can also remove our what was the name? My network. So we can also remove our um, network that we've created. And if I now do a docker network list, you see my network has been removed. If I do a docker ps, I see there is no more containers running and we are all cleaned up and this concludes the demonstration of communicating between docker commun uh, docker containers i hope you found this helpful um, if you like this video leave a thumbs up and um, if you'd like to subscribe i try to uh, release videos once a week and um, i'm trying to keep that up there well thank you very much for your time and see you in the next video